previously on the Reaper blog. So here's the ducking function or auto decay. So when it's loud, it decreases the decay time down to two and automatically returns it back up to the 16. Can you show how to do ducking in Reaper like you showed on Sound Toys plugin? It depends on what exactly you want to do. You could technically do ducking of any parameter with a parameter modulation. Can you clarify, like, do you mean sidechain compression or ducking of parameters? Let's take little plate, which does not have ducking. And we'll set it to like eight, ducking the reverb. Okay, well, a couple different ways. Let's try it with parameter modulation. So um, I last touched the parameter, the decay parameter, and then going to parameter modulation MIDI link. And I want to use a audio control signal uh, and just adjust this back up to this, the starting point of like here. So this controls kind of the starting point of that parameter. And then all of these controls change how far it's going to move. Sure, we'll just add this. Obviously that's way too much. So I'm going to set the audio track channels to one and two, and then we were going to move this in a negative direction. So the parameter will go to the left. And then there's a few things we can adjust here. There's the minimum volume, maximum volume, the strength, um, and then there's also the the shaping. Is there an order of operations for this? I don't think there is, really. You kind of just have to mess around. I always just mess around with it. So minimum volume is kind of like the threshold of where it starts. Um, but sometimes you can leave that at default and just adjust the shaping. I think I'm going to adjust the max a little bit. I think this is a pretty neat effect, actually. Adjusting the decay time of the reverb based on the incoming sound. So I'm gonna turn that off. Instead, we'll just do this the more traditional way, which is with a compressor. So i um, going to get a compressor. So this is gonna be after the instrument, but we need to actually get around the reverb because the reverb signal itself is not going to trigger the compression very well. We want the original sound to trigger the compression. I think I actually need like something like an EQ ahead of this so that I can copy. Yeah, I think this is how you have to do it. You have to have something that actually copies the output to an additional set of tracks. So now if recomp is set to auxiliary input, it's automatically set up for channels three and four to be auxiliary input. And if I listen to preview filter, I'm hearing no reverb on that. I've made a split in the signal, so I'm going around the little plate plugin by assigning channels three and four. And then three and four is picked up again by the detector input of recomp.
So now I just need to set a, a uh, ratio. So somewhere above probably two to one. So it's kind of a different effect. It's not as nice as the automatic ducking of or changing the decay time because we're not changing the decay time. We're, we're just sort of turning things down when they're loud. We could still make this work, so less reverb. We can make it so that only the kick makes a duck. Or we could take another, another sound, like, um, let's take a, let's take this wood block, super short, click sound. Let's put this on quarter notes. This will go into recomp as its source. So I'm going to drag from the routing button onto the plugin. You can see that the cursor changed to a cable icon. Let's put this uh, pre-fader, unity. It's going to channels uh, from one and two, which is what we hear two, three, and four, which is the sidechain input. And then we'll just um, come into the routing button here for this track so we don't hear this click. So we're turning off master send. So this is sometimes referred to as a ghost sidechain because it's a a signal that we're not listening to. It's, it's not following the dynamics of the kick drum, for example. It's its own pattern. Um, so, and to prove that, we could just take like the 16th note and we'll just, oops, wrong button. Let's do that. So there's a bit of a, a different pattern here. And one downside of this and why this is not sounding so great is that the reverb and the original signal are being turned down at the same time. Again, this is a, a good reason why you want to put your reverbs and things on their own tracks. So Little Plate is now on its own track. Recomp is going to be moved there. And I'll just change my routing so that the loop so this is my trigger. This loop now goes to the um, recomp. Let's make it pre-fader. So uh, reverb at 100% wet on a separate track. And this also needs ascend. It doesn't need to be a channel three, four send. What if you duck the dry wet control? Yeah, let's set that up. So I'll turn off the compressor and the dry wet we will trigger from 
um, audio input. Let's let's try it on channels one and two. So it's getting the sound of the drums. And where's it going to start? It's going to start at negative and go positive. We can also flip this so it goes negative. I think, again, that's kind of a different effect. I do like that more the, than the compressor in this case. This way seems like it's easy to make it kind of reversed, or maybe I just didn't think of it earlier. You can make it... You can make it turn up when the input signal is, is loud, or we can flip it, go this way, and then we can uh, drop it when the signal is loud. And you can't really do that with a, a compressor. You can't do an inverted ducking. Pretty neat. I'm glad you asked that question. That's a good question. One final way. So again, we've got little plate here with too much reverb. Duck is a envelope-based transient controller. Something like that. We're, we're controlling the volume based on its own signal or an incoming signal or on the tempo. So this is currently set to trigger mode. We're going to set this to, we can set this to side chain. So now we see it moving based on the pattern that's coming in. We can scale this effect back. And with the amount control or this. We could also change the timing of this. Or we could take off the side chain input and just set it to uh, repeat. And this is going to follow the speed of the project. And now I want an LFO on this, and I don't know if I can LFO that. Yeah, shaper boxes just like duck. Duck can also do a crossover, so you can let through the the lows or let through the highs still. You'd also experiment with having duck before the plate. I mean, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this. You have this on half note. I think if you do this, it will let through the snare, but not the kick. Or we can set this to a one bar pattern and then bring this over here and then bring in another point.
So you can kind of just reverb the snare. So again, this is having duck before little plate. Let's put it after again. So the entire drum loop is going into little plate, but we're only letting through this envelope. Turn off the crossover. It's pretty cool. It's all fun stuff.